Yo, what's good everyone? Back again with another video. Today we are talking about the Logitech G Pro X2. Now, if you've watched my channel already, you already know I've talked about the GPX2. I've already made a video on it. And if you did see that specific video, then you know I was pretty negative about it, you know? I didn't like how it didn't ship with 4K. The skate design was changed for kind of no reason, and the skates itself didn't change. The side buttons were not improved at all. And then last but not least, the game breaker for me was the fact that the clicks were way too stiff. So I did have a black GPX2 in that video, but in this video, this is actually a newer one and I think they've made a new badge, so I'm just going to cover it right now. If you've watched my videos, you know I'm not really afraid to criticize these companies or the products. You know, I kind of roasted Logitech for this mouse and then I did roast Razer for the Cobra Mini. But you know, today I kind of have to do the opposite and I'm really happy to, honestly. You know, that just means better products for all of us. And the fact that Logitech actually listened to the criticism instead of just ignoring it is a good thing for us at the end of the day. Now, first things first, why did I even get a new GPX2 when I reviewed the last one poorly and then I just ended up returning it? because I found it unusable. You know, the click stiffness was a deal breaker for me. Well, that's because they had an update to push 4K to this normal USB dongle. If you think about it, it's quite impressive. The only thing I've seen is that the latency is very good for both click and sensor delay, but I have seen that there is some 4K pulling inconsistency, but you know, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter because you won't feel it in game. And seeing how they push this update, they might push another one in the future to fix the pulling inconsistencies. And if you think about it at the end of the day, this mouse comes with this dongle. You don't need to purchase a separate high pulling rate dongle. You know, Pulsar has their 4K dongle for 20, Lamzus is about like 10 to $15. You know, every company seems to be shipping a mouse without actually including the dongle oh yeah and razors is thirty dollars and now they include it with the mouse with the new death v3 pro smooth coating which is kind of crazy and annoying at the same time they should have done that at the beginning and also offer the mouse itself for 129 because that would be 160 minus the 30 dollars dongle but the mouse itself is still 149 which is you know you know what razor's just gonna do razor things and i'm just gonna keep calling them out for it but yeah let me know if you want to see some coverage or a review on the smooth coating i don't have one for the death adder v3 pro I still have the Faker Edition, and I'm so happy with that, so I haven't ordered the other one. But yeah, at the end of the day, if you think about it, I got this on sale for 136 and it comes with the high pulling rate dongle. You know, it becomes a harder argument with the quality that you get on this mouse to buy one of the, you know, other smaller companies. If you think about it, the smaller companies have like a $100 mouse, but then you got to pay 10 to 20 for the dongle. So that becomes around 110, 115, 120. This is 136 and you get a lot more quality, better software support, better firmware support as they've updated this. So yeah, it's a really tough place for the smaller companies right now. So I tried this just for the 4K. I just wanted to see how good it was. Honestly, I'm a 4K denier. Like it doesn't really matter. You can run every mouse at 1K and you'll still be good. Maybe once everyone in the world has a 540 refresh rate monitor, then maybe 4k will be a universal thing but as of now it's just not so yeah i was just curious but then i was pleasantly surprised because this has way way improved click feeling don't get me wrong they're still on the heavier side but it's actually like usable and the fact that they're heavy and so tactile, because I believe these do use the Omron Opticals, these are like one of some of the best clicks out there. If you know me, my favorite optical click before this was the Razer. But you might even be able to hear some like the plastic mushiness and grinding in that, whereas the GPX2, it's nice and snappy, it's just heavy enough where it's not too heavy, but also not too light. So my best optical click is now gonna go to the new GPX2. The only gripe I still do have with this is that they didn't reinforce the triggers at all. So if you saw the previously, I hate this about the GPX, but if you press it near the middle, you see it'll like kind of go down lopsided. And for the GPX1 on my oldest copy, it got pretty bad. But I was able to open it and tighten some screws that hold the clicks and it did fix it actually. So that is a bonus, but it also isn't at the same time because at the end of the day, to an average consumer, I don't recommend opening your mouse. And at the end of the day, 99% of people will never open their mouse. I urge companies to make their mice more moddable. For example, the screws are not accessible under the feet. But if you look at a company like Endgame Gear, they are very like modder conscious. You know, the whole like right to repair stuff in tech that's going on nowadays. They've actually put their screws on the bottom of their mouse, not where the skates are. So that just means you can open it, you can change the cable, 
you can change the internals, you can change the clicks without any worry of like messing up your click tensioning or having to remove your skates and replace them every time you want to mod your mouse. As for the side buttons, they are a bit improved, but they do still have a bit of pre-travel, but I like them. Um, honestly, I don't really use these side buttons besides browsing the web and push to talk. Even then, I don't push to talk a lot because it's going to change your aim if you're trying to talk and play at the same time. As far as battery life goes on the 4K polling, I have used it for a good amount of time and I can confirm that it gets to about 50% after like three to five days of playing. You know, I'm not crazy like grinding eight hours a day. So, you know, if you have no life or you're going pro, then it's going to be a bit worse. But I'm confident this will average about a week playing every day for like two to five hours, maybe. At the end of the day, I do recommend going 2K because you get the best battery life and the best performance, you know, kind of in between both. But yeah, I'm really just making this re-review to just give Logitech credit. They have made this mouse amazing now. You know, everything we kind of asked for in the GPX one has been done here. The side buttons do feel a bit better. It is USB-C. The clicks are opticals and very fast and they feel great while being a bit heavier. And I think the bit heavier will like kind of prevent from the mushiness that happens over time on the original GPX. But even then on the original GPX, the, you know, the clicks breaking down happens like over two plus years, I think. As far as the frame, like no creaking, nothing. You know, I feel like a lot of people complain about their GPX like breaking down over time. And honestly, they might just be little kids that are like throwing their mouse, smashing their mouse when they suck at games or people who open their mouse too much and eventually like, you know, the plastic tolerances just break down over time and it's natural. You know, it's not as severe as my death adder. Which sounds like your mother's bed frame. You know, even the Pulsar acts like V3, which has started to creak like within a month. You know, at least the Death Adder V3 took like six months to start doing this. So yeah, I've been loving this mouse. You know, it's just a classic. Everyone's used the GPX before. I mean, it is a bit decisive. You either love it or you hate it. It is a very good experience now. Very improved. You know, the prices have dropped a bit. I said I got this for 136 instead of the retail 160, which makes it a very good deal, even up against the budget brands. So yeah, giving credit where credit is due. Logitech fixed the GPX too.